Howdy. So we've got our Azure account set up, we've got our subscription set up, and we've got our budget set up. So now we can start getting started by actually creating creating services and start using things that um, Azure has to offer. And the first thing what we got to do is we're going to be going over resources groups in this video. So again, you can search for resource groups here, or you can go go over here and search for them. But I. I always use the search bar. It's just very convenient, so use that. So we're gonna go to re resource groups. So I don't have any resource groups created right now, but what are resource groups? Resource groups basically is just a, it's just a container. It's just a holder. It, it holds all of your resources that you're going to create. So what is that? So those are like your virtual machines, your databases, your virtual networks, your subnets, uh, security groups, that. So, so it just holds everything. So it's just a big container. And what's what's nice about that is, is if you're just playing around with th things, you can create your resource group, and you can have a bunch of, you know, ten things inside of that resource group. Maybe you have a virtual machine, a database, and different things. Well, if you're done with that, what you can do is you can just delete the resource group and it'll cascade and delete everything inside of that resource group, which is really, really nice. Um, if you've ever worked with AWS, AWS doesn't have that. And this is one thing I really like about Azure versus AWS is that the resource groups makes things really nice and it makes thing, makes it easy to group things together. Um, so, so another reason to use it would be if you're, if you're working at a company maybe and, and one guy is working on, you know, something he can have his own, you know, FUBAR resource group. You can have your own resource group and everything's just kind of everything that is yours that you're doing is maintained inside of that resource group. All right, so let's, let's create a resource group now. And it's very basic. There's not much information. So you see how we talked about subscriptions before? So this is where the subscriptions come in, come into play. We can select what subscription we want this resource group to be in. So we created the Azure course. So we want to use the Azure course so that this resource group is in that subscription. And then resource group name, let's just say, let's just do course, course RG resource group. It's up to you what you name these. It's, it's, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's, it's all up to you. Then you have a region that you can select. And Azure has a bunch of different reason, regions that you can select from. I'm going to go into regions in the, in the next video because there's a lot about them. But let's just do e, e, US West 2 or US East right now. That's a very common one that we'll use. And we'll do that. And all this resource group does is it just, this is where it stores metadata information about the resource group is going to be in US East 2. This doesn't mean that your resources inside of the resource group have to be in US East. They can be in any, any, any region. We'll go, we'll go over that in the next video, but just, just select US East and you'll be fine. So we can click review and create, or we can click Quick tags. So Azure has a way to put tags on basically every resource that you create. And those could be good for, for billing purposes, maybe, or just, just whatever you want to do. So let's just say, like, let's say Will. You know, Will is the key, or, or um, let's say developer. Developer and the value would be Will. You know, it, it, it's up to you on what you want, what you would want to put in the tags. You can leave them empty. Uh, we're going to leave it empty for now. But those those are there if you need. If you need them, but let's go to review and create now. And so it's going to do some validation to make sure we didn't do some, you know, screw something up. So validation has passed. So perfect. So let, let's just cr create. All right, so now our resource group is created. So let's go back to our homepage. 
And one of the things that you're going to use a lot is just going to the resource group to, to find what your resources are. There's also dashboards, but I'm not going to go into dashboards right yet, but there's dashboards that, that um, Azure offers that you can kind of pin things. But we're not going to go over that now. I, I don't really, I don't use dashboards. I usually mainly just go to resource groups. And that's going to give me all my resource groups right now. So you might have 10 resource groups depending on, you know, maybe you're working at a company or different things like that. But you can see how this subscription defaults to Azure course. That's what is selected here by default. So as long, so if I have just Azure course selected here, it's going to default this to Azure course, but you can always change that. But for the most part, while you're trying things out, just stick with one, one subscription. But as you go and you get production workloads, you know, you're going to want to have multiple subscriptions. All right. So let's, let's go into our resource group. Let's see what we got. All right. So if you look showing zeros of zero records, so right now we don't have anything inside our resource group. Like I said, our resource group is a container. It's just a holder. It holds things. So we haven't created any like virtual machines or databases to put in the resource group yet. But then there's also other things you can look at your resource group. You can have access control. You can set permissions on it. I'm not going to go over permissions until at the very, very end of this series, just because they, they are fairly complex in getting everything set up. Um, and I'd rather just get through everything and then we, we will, we can go over, um, permissions at, the, at the end of everything. Uh, another thing that's great about resource groups is you can look at costs based on just the resource group. And you can also set budgets just on the resource group. So maybe you have one developer that can, that is allowed to spend a thousand dollars a month, but maybe you have a new hire or an intern that is only allowed a hundred dollars a month. So you can kind of set thresholds there and you can see what they are spending versus what everybody else is spending. So we don't, ha we don't have anything set up, you know, but those are the basis of resource groups. You'll see as we go, we're going to start using it and you're going to see everything that they have to offer. But next we're going to go over regions and availability zones in, in Azure. So again, make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss out any on any of the uh, future videos. And we'll see you in the next video.